Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jacqueline and today we're talking about the architectural wonders of traditional Nordic buildings. Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we're dissecting the evolution of Nordic architecture from Vikings to modern times. One of you wrote a comment suggesting a video on Viking-inspired interiors and it got me thinking. I'll admit it's been a while since I did an architectural deep dive, so sorry for that, um, but let me know what kind of topics you want me to cover. Architecture history and why buildings are the way they are fascinates me, so any requests I will take note of. I personally find the Scandinavian countries fascinating and because I live in Scotland, I feel like there's a connection between us and the Nordic countries for many different reasons, but the climate being one of them. There's also a Viking fire festival in Scotland on the Shetland Islands every January, commemorating their Norse heritage. Also, my mum is Scottish, I've probably mentioned that before, and she's told me that apparently our ancestors are from Denmark. Whether that's true or not, who knows, I'll have to do a genealogy test to prove it. Scandinavian interiors have been in the zeitgeist for years now, and for good reason, they know good design to a T. However, it's obviously taken a while to go from this to this, so let's rewind back to the beginning. But before we take a look at the origins of Scandinavian architecture, I think we should first look at who the Nordic countries actually are. If you weren't aware, Scandinavia is made up of Norway, Sweden and Denmark. On the other hand, Nordic countries encompass a broader group of nations that include not only the Scandinavian countries, but also Finland, Iceland, the Faroe Islands, Ireland and, in most definitions, Greenland too. A common misconception, I find, is that Lots of non-Europeans tend to think that all of Europe looks the same and has the same architecture as one another. However, although we have similarities with our neighbouring countries, each country has their own unique identity. I used to live in England, I now live in Scotland, and the architecture is certainly different from one another, even though we're in close proximity. And the same can be said for our northern neighbours. Like any country, it takes a long time to evolve into these modern structures, so let's rewind back to the beginning. The Viking Age in Scandinavia is typically considered to have occurred between the late 8th and the late 11th century, spanning roughly from the late 700s to the late 1000s AD. They lived in a range of settlements, including villages, farms and trading centres. These settlements could vary in size from small hamlets to larger towns, and they were typically located near waterways for access to trade routes and fishing. Most typically, they inhabited what were called longhouses. They were large rectangular buildings with a long and narrow layout, typically 7 metres wide and anything from 15 to 75 metres long, which is crazy, right? The walls were constructed of planks, logs, or wattle and daub. The interior of a Viking longhouse was divided into different areas, usually with a central hearth for cooking and heating. Viking longhouses served multiple purposes beyond just living quarters, though. They were also used for activities such as weaving, woodworking, and food processing, even storing animals at one end if there were no stables on the farm. However, Vikings aside, as the time period moved on, so did the architecture within each Nordic country. Traditional Finnish architecture is characterised by the predominant use of wood, and the oldest known dwelling is the Kota, a traditional tent of the Sami people of Lapland. They are dwellings where visitors can grill food or they're used simply as a gathering place due to their fire pit. The origins trace back to the Sami people. The Sami traditionally lived in portable tents called a guati, which were similar in design to the kota. These tents were constructed from wooden poles covered with reindeer hides or canvas, and they were easily disassembled and transported to different locations. The modern kotas are distinguished by their hexagonal shape, conical roof, shingle roofing, central fireplace and wooden construction. Today, Finnish kotas are often used as cosy retreats for outdoor activities such as camping, fishing and hunting.
Finland also brought us the sauna, which is so iconic I thought it would be a sin to skip out of the video. The earliest evidence of saunas in Finland date back to around 7000 BC during the Stone Age. These early saunas were likely simple pits dug into the ground and heated with hot stones. You've probably noticed that Scandinavian buildings are usually painted in bright, bold colours. But why is that exactly? The majority of traditional houses were constructed using wood. And why is that? Well, these countries are renowned for being surrounded by trees. In fact, almost 70% of Sweden's land area is covered in forest, and that's 74% in Finland, compared to only 33% in the US and a mere 13% in the UK. So you can understand that the traditional building material in Scandinavia has been wood. In these areas where wooden architecture was prevalent, painting the exterior would help make sure that the building didn't weather or rot, thus preserving the buildings for generations. The easiest pigments to obtain come from the earth, like the yellow Keltomulta in Finland. These were used in bulk before the creation of industrial paints. Moving on to Finland's neighbour, Sweden. I should mention that all these countries have a multitude of different architecture and I've simply chosen what I believe is the most iconic, in my opinion. But don't come for me in the comments, people, because all of your architecture is beautiful and lovely and all that jazz. For example, Sweden has its very own national romantic style or national romantique, where in the early 20th century, architects sought to create buildings that harmonised with the Swedish landscape, incorporating organic forms and motifs inspired by nature. However, I find the most distinguished thing about Swedish architecture is actually the colour of their buildings. Falu Red refers to the deep red paint colour derived from a copper mine located in the town of Falun. Falu Roda, as it's locally known, allows the wood to breathe and to release moisture quickly. This paint has been used for centuries in Swedish architecture and dates back to the 16th century and was initially created as a byproduct of copper mining operations, as the waste material from the mines contained iron oxide. Dalarna County, where Falun is situated, is also celebrated for the Dala horse, a bright red carved wooden horse and now a symbol of Sweden. The bold red wooden country houses scattered across the country are now an inseparable part of the Swedish landscape and are often the colour choice for country houses called Sommerstuga or contemporary building projects. Perhaps if you're based in the US, you've maybe seen these Tudor revival houses from time to time. Well, here in Europe, they're very common in a lot of countries, and I cover them in my English Cottage video if you want more on the variation found in the UK. However, in Denmark, these are known as Binningswerk, or half-timbered houses. This type of architecture can be seen throughout Europe, but interestingly, out of the Nordic countries, Denmark houses the most, with little, if any, found in its northern neighbours. And I can only assume this is due to its geographical location, with Denmark being so near to Germany, where this building originated. There's actually a seaport town called Kue. 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 Uh. Kue. That's what Google Translate says. 
Um, that's home to the oldest half-timbered house built in 1527. In rural areas where wooden structures were abundant, a new building technique emerged during the Middle Ages. They can be identified by their timber frame, plaster infill, steep pitched roof, gable ends, and sometimes even asymmetric design. Half-timbered houses are an integral part of Denmark's cultural heritage and architectural identity. They reflect the country's agrarian past, rural lifestyle, and craftsmanship traditions. Fascinatingly, the old town in Aarhus, Jutland, has an open-air village museum that you can walk around, consisting of 75 historical buildings collected from all parts of the country. Next up is Norway, and you've probably seen these cool churches before. Maybe you've spotted a similar style in Disney's Frozen. Well, their collective name are stave churches, and they're known for their distinctive architectural style in which wooden posts or staves support the structure. Norway's stunning stave churches combine Christian motifs with Viking themes. Stave churches were built during a period of Christianization in Norway when Christianity was gradually introduced and adopted by the Norse population. The design of stave churches reflects a blend of Norse pagan traditions and Christian architectural influences, resulting in a unique architectural style that is distinctly Norwegian. Originating during the Middle Ages, with the earliest examples of stave churches dating back to the 12th century. The interior often features elaborate carvings, decorative elements, and medieval frescoes. Stave churches are considered among the most important elements of medieval wooden architecture in Europe, and if you get the chance to see one, please do, as there are only 28 left in Norway. Far to the west of the Atlantic is, of course, the land of fire and ice. In such a country with a volatile climate, you can imagine that buildings would need to withstand the harsh winters. Enter turf houses. Icelandic turf houses, or torfbæir, I'm so sorry for those pronunciations, are traditional dwellings built with a wooden frame and turf or sod. The original turf houses were constructed by the original settlers from the west coast of Norway and were in fact based on Viking longhouses. For better insulation, the turf houses were built partially underground and covered in turf. The underground and low-lying nature of the design helps to minimise exposure to wind and weather while maximising the thermal efficiency of the building. They can be easily identified by their turf walls and roof, volcanic rock foundation, low-profile small windows, and timber cladding. Quite iconic in my opinion, and very Hobbit-like.
Our exploration doesn't end in the past. As I mentioned in the beginning, Scandinavian design has been extremely popular with consumers during the past 10 years. Thank you, IKEA. Contemporary architects continue to draw inspiration from these age-old traditions, blending them with modern innovation to create sustainable, functional and aesthetically striking structures that honour the spirit of Nordic design. And yes, of course these designs are more angular and streamlined in comparison to their ancestors, but what they do have in common is their unusual designs. What do you think of Nordic architecture? Do you prefer the old or the new? If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or subscribe for more videos. And if you need help fulfilling your own design dreams, I've left our website in the description. That's it for today's video. If you like these architecture history deep dives, then leave some suggestions below. We love reading all your comments. Um, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.